problem is I can, I can never find it on the um, page. I don't really find them. <laughs> How do you find the actual lives? Since you found it? You know, I've, I've hooked them up, so... This hooks up with that. Don't know. We'll find out in a second. See in a second, hopefully on this. I'm hoping it comes through. Hey everyone, hi guys. Oh. Thank you for joining us on today's Facebook Live. We've still not got the hang of how to set it up at all. Um, I'm going to just make a quick tutorial today, so just a bunny rabbit. Um, I do actually already have a tutorial for this on YouTube, so if you want to see that as well, it's still there on my YouTube, you're very welcome to go on and have a look. Um, I've made them in different colours and things as well. I'll show you those as we go along, actually. But what I thought today was I wanted to use the... Wait a couple of minutes for people to join. All right. Okay, sorry, sorry Richard's time to wait. People can watch it back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not very good at waiting. I'm not very patient. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, today, so while we're waiting for people to join, I'll just run through what we're going to be using. To so um, I want to use the Renshaw's modelling paste the Belgian chocolate one. Um, first of all, because I really like the taste of this one. Um, and also, I want a brown bunny for this. Now, I don't want it quite as dark as that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually mix it with some white, which is my Saracina. Now, both of these are modeling paste that we're using. So you can use fondant. So that's the modeling paste, the white Saracina one. Also, we sell all these things in our shop as well online. Um, so if you're unsure where you can get anything throughout, you can ask. And uh, we'll try and put links up as we go along to where you can get these bits and pieces from. So I'll just move those to one side for now and we'll give these this a bit of a mix together. So, do you want to hold a couple of little bunnies up? Yeah, in a second. And you can also tell people that we are doing bunnies today, not cookies. Oh yeah, I forgot to say. So we put it to the vote, guys, as to whether you wanted a bunny tutorial or the cookies tutorial and everybody voted for the bunnies one. Yeah, we had more votes. Oh, we had, sorry, not everybody. Yeah, we had more votes for the bunny than for the biscuit. So can you see, I've just mixed those two together. So just these two mixed together to give me this paler brown. Now, I forget what I'm on about all the time, so you will have to bear with me, guys. I have a memory of like two seconds. <laughs> So I was gonna say about using fondant. So you can use fondant for the little models, um, but sometimes you have to use a little bit of Tylos. It depends on the size of them as well that you're doing. So this one that I did a little while ago, 
in fact last year it's thick of dust um this one's made out of modeling paste so because it's fairly big and its head's big there's a lot of weight bearing down on it so if i made this in fondant as soon as i put the head on it would just compress and squash okay unless you made the body really in advance of the head and then you put the head on like days and days later you can add tylos or cmc to fondant and use that for modeling um, some people love it i personally don't get on with the tylos and fondant uh, mainly because I'm not very good at adding the right amount and then I find it crumbles and cracks and then it's just really difficult for me to work with. But definitely a modeling paste if you're doing something a little bit bigger. So I've done like the next size down. Oops, and I'm breaking it for you straight away. Okay, so you can see the next size down or a smaller version. Um, again, I've used modeling paste, but you might find that you can use fondant as you're getting a little bit smaller because there's less weight involved. The only thing is when I'm using one of the small pieces, I find it hard to keep the shape because I squash it a bit more when I'm creating small like little balls and shapes with it. Now this one's actually made in something different again. So this one is, this one's made with the uh, Laped wrapped. I might be saying it wrong, I don't know. Um, it's quite wax like this one. It is edible, but it doesn't really taste of much. But it's good for if I'm making things in a rush, it firms up very quick so I can build very quickly with it. But obviously you don't have to use it. You, you, this is just to really tell you you can use all different things. And again, you can go even smaller if you want. I don't know how well you can see that one. Can you see as the rabbits are getting smaller and smaller, the eyes obviously get smaller. And I haven't got much space to play around with. So this one has just got holes in the eye holes. The eye holes for the eyes. Oops, I'm knocking him over. This one has just got little black uh, pieces of modeling paste rolled in or you can also get um, sugar pearls that fit in and that's really nice and easy way to do your eyes as well okay but these small ones they just fit nicely on like a little cupcake so if it's small the weight isn't so heavy that I can't push that onto a little cupcake okay and that's just yeah, literally but... some buttercream on that with some sprinkles I think we used these sprinkles on that one okay but I'm not going to show you how to do the cupcakes that's just really to show you the different sizes of the rabbits that you can do okay so we're going to go a little bit bigger if when you're first doing it you struggle go bigger because it's easier to make things that are bigger and then gradually each time you do we'll make it a little bit smaller okay so however much paste you've got we want to make sure we don't need too much at first for the body otherwise it won't leave enough for our head and legs and everything so let's see so out of this I should have plenty to make a decent sized one I reckon I'm going to want at least a third for the head and about a third for the body I say a third they're the most uneven thirds ever I'll weigh some bits in a minute I don't have to use it all also I can tell when I've cut into things if I've mixed it up properly or not I haven't because I can see it's a bit marbled still Okay. And if you guys want to ask questions as we're going along, that's absolutely fine. Richard will try and read them out if he sees them. I apologise, I can't see them now. Yeah, we've got quite a few hellos from around the world. So we've got some from Germany, Portugal, I can see here. So it's nice that everybody's joining us. Um, just a bit of a shout out, uh, not shout out, but just to hope everybody's staying safe at the moment because obviously we're aware the coronavirus has taken the world by storm. And everybody, no matter where you are, has been affected by it. So we do hope everybody is coping with it. Okay. So, and the idea of these videos really was just, if you're stuck at home, to give you something to watch and something that is maybe quite easy for you to try yourself. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with about that size. You'll see, because I'm using modelling chocolate, the longer it's in my hands for, the warmer it's going to get, so the softer it's going to get. So it might be that actually my rabbit sinks a bit more if this paste is very soft. So if you're doing this at home and you're using the same paste and it's very soft, just give it five minutes to go to room temperature. Okay, now I'm going to measure it for you. I don't measure things usually, but for you guys today, I'm going to measure just to see how much I'm going to use. So about 50 grams. That's if you want to do in a similar size to this. So I'm going to start with the body. Now really I should keep this extra paste in an airtight bag so it doesn't go dry, but it's not going to be out for that long. So for my body, I'm going to roll so that we get a teardrop. So I'm kind of pressing a little bit, almost like this angle. So if you take a ball and you kind of roll just one end of it, it's going to give us that kind of teardrop shape. Okay, so that's the basic body shape. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dressing tool and I'm going to use the pointy end of it where I can feel there's a ridge on it. And to one side of the teardrop, halfway down, I'm going to push in and rock it downwards. So can you see we're getting this kind of curve? So this is creating like the hip on our rabbit. Okay. Then we're going to do the same on the other side, or roughly the same. Usually I end up with one hip a bit bigger than the other. That's fine. It won't be too obvious when we finish. I'll just go a little bit deeper in there. Okay, just smooth out any sharp lines. Deep enough now. Okay. Then what we're going to do is use this middle bit. Oh, hang on, I'm going to go deeper still. This middle bit here for our front leg. So I'm just going to push a line down the middle to separate this. Don't worry how high up you go because we're going to cover this up with like um, a piece of chest hair anyway. Okay. Now because it's quite soft, I've squashed mine a bit at the bottom. So what I'm going to do on its bottom is just push it six feet outwards a little bit back. Okay. So that's the kind of shape it is from the front, like this from the side, and like that from the back, unless you've squashed it a lot like I did. So, I'm going to give it some white chest hair, so I'm going to go back to my Saracino in white. So this is the Saracino paste. Can you see when I first start, it looks a bit, um, sort of bitty, but that's what it's like when you, when you get it at first. So that's this one, okay? Don't worry that it looks like that. Once you've kneaded it, the heat from your hands, that's making it more like a chewing gum consistency. So it's not right at the moment, but can you see it's looking more like a chewing gum consistency? So we're going to knead this a little bit more then it should be ready for us to use okay, and then what we're going to do is create a little teardrop kind of shape for the front so you shall roll a rough shape first squash it and see how big it is compared to my bunny but if I think I need to go bigger or smaller I'm going to maybe go just a tiny bit smaller so we'll pinch a little bit off so let's weigh this again normally I wouldn't weigh it but I know it helps you guys a little bit if I weigh this I think my weighing scales are actually in shot. Are they for you guys to see? When it goes to zero, go to zero. They're not going to go to zero. Why are they not going to zero? There we go. About four and a half grams. Like, so you might want a bigger piece for the chest hair, you might want a smaller piece. Again, we're going to put the same shape that we went for the body, so a teardrop. So, can you see I kind of rolled on one edge to get a teardrop? And then we're going to flatten it a little bit like this. So it's still got a bit of thickness to it. And I'm going to use the pointy end again of my dressing tool. And we're going to nudge in. You can see in a couple of places on the side. And we'll do the same on this side. So I'm going to do another one just there. Okay. So it's a rougher texture now. I'm going to stick it to the front. I'm just going to use a little bit of water. And you can use edible glue if you prefer. But water works okay for me. So I'm going to just use that. I'm just going to press that down onto that. legs is this rabbit so if you're thinking your legs are too chunky at the front what it means is that I didn't go in far enough you know with my first lines for the hips so if I do another one I'll maybe move them further in okay so I'm gonna check I've got the right size for the head usually the size for the head is similar to the size that I use for the body yeah I think that should be plenty big enough Again, I'm just going to weigh it. Was it about 50 that we used on the body? It was about 50. About 50. It was about 60 there, so we'll punch, pinch a little bit. Anybody that's been to classes with Zoe will know that Zoe does not measure anything, ever. <laughs> I'm not very good at measuring things, but I know a lot of people work by measurements. Um, for me, it's a case of rolling a ball, seeing if it fits. If it doesn't, I'll add more to it or take some off. Okay, so let's roll this back into a ball for the head. If you're getting cracks and creases, roll much firmer if you can, okay? They should hopefully start to come out. If you've got hot hands, they disappear much quicker. If you've got colder hands, they take a little bit longer to get rid of. I've got fairly cold hands. I've rolled a bit of weight into that. Okay, so for the head, I don't want it to be a complete ball shape. I want it slightly flattened. So I'm just gonna press it a little bit to flatten it. I'm gonna flatten it until it gets to the size that I want. Now I like them to have a fairly big head. So I'm actually gonna flatten it even just a little bit more. I'm flattening slightly more on the top of the head actually than at the bottom. Because if I keep it thicker here at the bottom, I've got more to attach 
itching her body with. So you know where you made the indent in the legs? Did you use a Dresden tool? Yes, I used the pointy ridge at the back of the Dresden tool. Or the flower and veining tool, it's called this one. It's a PME one. That's the main tool that I use. Maybe flatten its head just a tiny bit, but it's fine. You can keep it completely oval shaped, or if you want, you can so nudge in a little bit here. I'm going to nudge mine in a little bit just there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a bit of a nose. So just a small piece of white I'm going to use for the nose. Again, roll an oval. I'm going to have a look at the size first to see if I like it or not. Now, smaller than the last one, but I think I'm going to try a small one this time. So again, if you want to know the weight, let's see. My scales come on quick enough. About two grams this one is. And again, where you stick it on the face makes a difference to what it looks like. So if I stick it up there, it looks very different to if I stick it down there. Okay. And obviously rabbits don't actually look like this in real life. It kind of looks more like a teddy bear style rabbit. In fact, let me just show you what you would do. If you wanted to turn it into a soft toy rather than actual rabbit, usually what I do is just run can you see a little stitch line off the middle with this tool? Again, you could probably, so if it was a soft tie, you'd probably want some stitch lines for the places on it as well. So maybe like up, can you see each leg? So it instantly starts making it look different. Wasn't the look I was it going for, but, but it's just so I could show you guys. Okay, then I'm gonna push this on. And what I'm gonna do is just using the pointy end of my Dresden tool, we're gonna nudge it up a little bit at the bottom, okay, like that. And then we need, and we've got just now, we want a pink nose, and I forgot to bring over some pink. Please could you give me some pink? I'm tempted to give it like a sugar pearl, but I think round won't suit the, the nose shape. Oh wait, no, I like that, I think. Do I like it? Yeah, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a sugar pearl actually. Maybe it's a chocolate pearl one, really. I think they are, it's a long time since I've actually eaten one. I think there's chocolate in the middle. We'll see. We'll see if you prefer it with like this nose or not. If not, it's just a modeling paste that we would have used and we'd have just rolled it into like a bit of nose. Sticky. Cute, looks like a clown though. So if you were using modeling paste instead, what we would have done is a small oval. Then I push the bottom of the oval, kind of, can you see, in either side to make like a triangle a little bit wider, like that kind of shape. Okay, so that would have been the shape that went on instead of the ball, but I quite like that. It does make it look a bit like a clown though, doesn't it? Do you know what? You don't know what something's going to look like though until you've tried it. And because it's not for anyone, I, I'm quite happy to sort of play around with trying bits and pieces. Because I've also used a look at Oh, I could have used a love heart. A love heart would have been nice. Yeah, these have got like little hearts in I could have stuck one of those on. Never mind, it's got this one on there. That's fine. So, with the eyes on these guys, the bigger the head, obviously the bigger the eye you can put in them. So, like these smaller ones, like we were saying, I've just got tiny little eyes. It doesn't mean you can't put small eyes on this kind of face. You can do. Um, but I prefer the bigger eyes just on the bigger face. So usually when I'm deciding where I put them, I'll just put a light marking with my finger to see, you know, do I want them down there or do they look better up there? Again, I can never decide. I'm gonna go with fairly wide for these ones. So I'm just gonna put a little mark there with my finger. You can even, if you want, rub like this so it enhances the cheeks a little bit. I don't know if that shows up very well actually on, on the camera, but it makes this bit here bulge out a little bit if I do that. So for my eye sockets, I'm going to use a ball in tool. Again, I'll just go with the small end at first. Checking that I'm happy with where they're going to go. And then if I want to go bigger, I can go bigger. So on this one, I use this end. Do I want to go that big? I can't decide. Is that big, Richard, no. or smaller? No? Okay, we'll keep it a bit smaller on this one. What's big ears? Who wants what big ears? Okay, so we've kept them a little bit smaller on this one, just so you guys can see the difference. So, you could, even in these, put one of these little pearls in and they would just slot in quite nicely into there. That actually would look quite nice. I quite like that. But I'm going to put a white eye in just to show you the difference. In fact, I'll leave that there for a second so you can see the difference. So I'll go back to my white modeling tape. So I know that actually that ball's about the right size. 
size. So I want to roll the same size in white modern lace. I think that's a bit bigger. Let's go a bit smaller. And then if the eye hole just a tiny, tiny bit bigger. And we'll drop this in. If your paste is sticky, you can get away with dropping it in without any water. If it's quite dry and it's sticking to your finger instead of into the uh, face, just put a bit of water or edible glue behind where the eye is going to go. So I want a tiny bit of black. Again, I'm going to use modeling paste. Let's see if I can find a bit of black. So you can see these are all just little bits that I've got in my pots. I keep all my little scrap bits of paste because I can use them for things. Richard laughs at me. I don't like waste. I don't know if you guys can hear the lady that lives at the back. <laughs> her little uh, greenhouse is literally right outside our window, so I think we can hear everything that she's doing. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, she's on the phone to somebody. <laughs> okay, so I just want a small ball of black and I'm going to squash it a little bit just to check how big it gets because sometimes when I roll it, it's difficult to tell when I squash it how big it's going to get and if I squish it, and it's really big, it just fully covers that white anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna try and push it in here. I've pushed it up towards one side. Oh, yeah, she's really loud. Okay, let's put a little white dot in this eye. Oops, you can see I do not have a steady hand at all. These are just edible pens as well. Sometimes if your paste is very soft, it's harder to use them. I'm going to put a second white dot in there like that. Okay. Which do you prefer, the black one or the white eye? Uh, the white. Okay. Personally, I like the white eye. I'm going to take the, the sugar curl out and we'll do another eye to match. I can even hear the person on the other end of the phone as well. She's not even in the room with us. She's actually outside. Can you guys hear her? Can you hear her on the other end? I didn't even consider her being around when I was thinking about making the video. Okay, there we go. I should have really rolled both the whites at the same time so that I knew they were the same size. the Facebook Live afterwards so she can have a conversation on the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we're going to squash that one down as well. In fact, I was going to have it looking that way, but I might have it kind of looking towards the middle. So... This is where, from my angle, I can't really see very well. From above, you guys can probably see better as to if it's looking. Buzz eyed. Yeah, that's the aim. That's, that's what I was aiming for. <laughs> it's okay. She's going. You can hear her getting in her car now. Okay, so let's put in the whites of the eyes. You should do them both at the same side, so the right side and the right side. But on this one, I'm going to try them both going inwards. I'm going to get them as similar as I can. Um, I say as similar as I can because I never ever get them to match. Okay. I'm actually going to see what this one looks like with some eyebrows. So, I'm just going to use another edible pen, this time in black. I'm going to keep them fairly small and simple. With the eyebrows, if you can have them raised upwards, um, it's a, why is that when you say it looks cheery, does he? But <laughs> it's not an angry look. If you have them aiming downwards, they're going to look really angry. Okay, and of course you can stick them on in paste if you prefer. Should I give it eyelashes? Should it be a girl or should it stay a boy? Oh, a boy. I mean, boys have eyelashes as well, but it usually... Did you see a boy? Yes. Usually it makes them look girly. All I would do is just a couple of little flicks out from the side if I was making it a girl. Or you can even stick it on. So you can see on this one, it's just a thin piece of paste. Oops, I've not got it in shot. On this one, it's just a thin piece of paste that's rolled up and around. Okay? I like it like this for this one. Now... I want the head to firm up a little bit. Can you see it's soft? It's also stuck to my mat a little bit. I should have really put some corn flour down to stop it sticking. So we'll give this a few minutes to firm up. In fact, just before it starts getting too firm, I'm going to push my paintbrush handle into the top of the head in a couple of places so that when I put the ears in, I can actually push the ears into something. Just check if it's face too much when I've picked it up. So can you see, even now it's still soft enough that I can play around with it a tiny bit. I wish I had gone bigger with the eyes, but that's okay. Or maybe make him a bow. Bows. Okay, let's do the feet next. Or a bow tie. Or a bow tie, yes, because it could have a bow tie. Okay, so. We want big feet for the sort of back feet. Maybe not quite as big as that, let's see. So 
again, before I wait to tell you guys how much I'm going to use, I roll a rough shape first. It's kind of like a sausage shape at first. Oh, I think that should be about right. When I do it, I'm going to roll it slightly thinner at one end and thicker at the other. So this thin end will be the heel end and the fat end will be like the toe end. I'm going to weigh it for you so that you guys know how much we've used. Oh, Richard, you moved my scales. So people can see the weight. 7.8. So seven or eight, or even if you use 10 grams, it would be fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half up the middle so we get two long pieces, or as close as I can to the middle. It's going to squash it a little bit, so I'm just going to round it back off now. Round at that end. Okay. Oh, one's bigger than the other. I'll just stretch that one out. Okay. So I'm going to put some little toes on the end. Again, just using the pointy end. You feel there's a ridge on the back of it. That's what I'm going to use. Just put in a couple of lines. So can you see on the top, the curve is where we're putting those lines. I'm going to leave the underneath bit plain. I'm going to put some water on the thinner end. And we're going to push it down near the bottom. So if I pick that up, can you guys see where we're pushing it? They're a bit soft at first, so you might find that they want to flop down a little bit. But let's just pop something under there. Oh, it's not gonna work. Just want to tell people what the brand model is again. Yeah. So I'm just propping it under just to stop it falling. So this one is actually the Belgian modeling chocolate, the Ventures, mixed with actually the Serratino. So they're both kind of modeling paste. Well, this one's a modeling chocolate, this one's a modeling paste. So this one does taste, it tastes like chocolate fudge. It's actually really nice, this one. Um, this one does taste really sweet. I wouldn't know how to describe it. It's a bit it's like candy cigarettes. Is it not? No, that's the Cape Duchess one, I think, that tastes oh. of candy cigarettes. The students like the taste of it. Um, it smells nice. It, it smells very strong, very sweet. Um, I don't usually eat this stuff, but I'm popping this. Um, it's those two mixed together to get a slightly pale brown. So it gets quite soft because of the modeling chocolate and modeling paste. Um, it can get very soft when it gets very warm, but when it goes to room temperature, it, it'll be pretty firm. It's not, It won't dry so hard that if you want to eat it, you'd break your teeth on it. You wouldn't. So water on the back. And I'm going to push that on pretty firmly onto, can you see here? Just here. So just in front of that hip bit. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit more definition in my hip here because it seems to be disappearing a little bit, doesn't it? So I'm just pressing in a bit more there. Okay, this one actually looks to be staying up more than that one. That one's wanting to flop down a little bit. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? We're going to put the feet on, so Richard's probably going to want to go back to that position in a second anyway. So the front feet don't need to be as big as those back feet. We're going to start with a little ball. I think these might be a bit bigger than I've made on the other one, but that's fine. Shall we again? About three grams in that one, roughly. And I'm going to cut it in half. Don't worry if it squishes a little bit or if it's not exactly in half. Roughly in half is enough for me. I'm going to put some water on the front. Can you see it better there? Mm, it's going to last properly, yeah. So I'm going to put water, like I say, or edible glue, whichever you prefer. I'm going to put that in a tiny bit there. I don't want it too much wider than my leg. Push that onto there. Give it a little push on the front. Okay. And you'll push it more when we put the little toes in anyway. So I'm going to put two lines in at the front of each one for my toes. Oh, maybe because we've made it a bit... Oh, don't touch it, Richard. I don't like people touching my things. Because we've put stitching lines in everywhere else and thinking they should really have a little stitching line in so you can tell it's like a soft toy. Oh, I haven't put any on the feet. Let's put some on the feet, the back feet, I should say. I should have really done this before sticking them on and I didn't really give it much thought, but... Then by giving it a bigger tail, it just offers it a bit more balance. Shall we, my tail? It might be too big, we'll see. It's fairly big, but I'm happy with that. Okay, so mine is five grams. Five and a half grams, five grams. Don't, like I say, don't worry if it's not exactly the same as mine. It's, it's not going to matter. You might prefer it the 
smaller tail, you might prefer a bit of bigger tail. I mean, don't go for a tail that's the same size as the body because that will just look a bit weird. Okay. So, Richard's whispering something on my back. No idea what we're saying. Okay, so, while we've been working on the tail, the head, the body has started firming up a little bit, which is good. So if I had to put the head on as soon as I'd made the body, like just the body, it would be very soft if you wanted to squat. But it feels like it's firming up now. You can actually get them to balance, but you have to be very careful. Um, because I'm doing this all in one go, all, all at the same time, I'm not giving it much chance to sort of rest. The easiest thing for me to do is add a bit of support now. I'm going to use a cocktail stick. You can use other things. So you can use a piece of spaghetti. I'm just really heavy handed and I always snap spaghetti. Okay. I even though spaghetti is edible and the cocktail stick is, and I would still remove the piece of spaghetti because it wouldn't be a cooked piece of spaghetti, it would be a raw piece of spaghetti that you would put in there. Um, I know that sounds really obvious. Um, so this would have to be removed if you were gonna eat it. So all these smaller ones I've done, they don't have that stick in, they're just pushed together, but they're fairly small and they held together okay. Yeah, this one because the head's so big. While it's drying, it might topple. Okay, so we're going to push this stick into that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the height of the stick against the head, if the head's pushed against the body there. Because I just want to make sure it's not going to come out the top. If it does look like it's going to come out the top, then we would have to trim that down. But I think it's okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on. You can even use, you know, like the little um, cake pop sticks in the middle if you want. Again, it would still have to be removed though. So I'm going to push this into here. Take them really around. And I'm going to push them down a little bit. Like that. You could even have them looking to the side a little bit. He was like a clown, didn't he? Okay. So. He needs some ears, but I'm actually, I'm going to give that head a minute to rest. So, shall I give him a bow? A bow. Please, can you pass me some blue? This is where you know that I'm not very organised when I'm getting Richard to pass me everything that I need as we're going on. I thought I'd got everything out we needed in that, yeah. Oh, phone ringing. Oh, yeah, I'm like, blue goes with the air. I'm out. So I'll just soften this. Oh. Well, our voicemail picks up the valve. So we'll just be needing this. Okay. And if you're doing it again, don't worry if it takes you a little bit longer than it's taken me. That's fine. I've made these a few times. I know they're slightly different every time I make one. So when you're making it, you know, don't feel it has to be the same. Try different colours, different nose shapes, different eye sizes. So we, the bow is going to just be really simple. I'm just going to move them to one side. Do you want a big bow or a small bow? Mm -hmm. I think if I go too big, it's not going to fit under under his chin. So I want two balls about the same size. Just see what size they're going to be. They're not quite the same, but it's fine. One point eight. Oh, one point eight. Oh, now I dropped it on the floor. No one's eating this one. If I hadn't told you guys that I dropped it on the floor, you wouldn't even know, would you? I dropped it on the floor. Don't, no one's going to eat this. We're okay. So, the shape that we use a lot is that teardrop. So, I'm going to roll, can you see one end of my circle for the teardrop? And then I'm going to push the other end flat. So, it gives us almost like a rounded triangle. Then, from top to bottom, we're going to squeeze it. Then, what I'm going to do is push the fat end my dressing tool in the middle okay so i'll show you that again so roll oh it doesn't want to roll now one end so we get in the teardrop then at the other end we push in so we get that triangle then we're going to squeeze it from front to back just a little bit so leave a bit of thickness there and then we're going to use the thick rounded end so not the pointy end the opposite end in like that and then i'll just pinch it together a little bit there then we'll stick those together and we'll stick a centre bit in. So put water on the back of each of these. Okay, and uh, we'll stick this on. See if I can see it and if Richard can get in there. 
see it. Okay, so we're gonna push them. I'm gonna go to one side rather than in the middle, I think. Give them a good firm press. One of them does look bigger than the other, but I'm not sure if that's because I've just pushed it so hard that it now looks a bit bigger. Then for the middle, I could either add another little sugar pearl in the center or a piece of this. What do you think, sugar pearl? I'm just going to see what one looks like. Mm, no, it's too similar to the note, it's just been round. So I'm going to add some two just to fix them. So we want a small piece of this. I can go much smaller with this. Tiny bit of water. I'm not going to worry about weighing this bit for you guys, though. I've gone slightly more oval than rounded. Let's see if we can get that in there. If we can stick it to my finger, it's easier. And then we'll just nudge that into there. Like that. Yeah. I like the blue and the pink together. I was going Easter a bit. I feel like it looks more like something that would go on a baby shower cake or something for a baby's cake than for Easter. But that's fine. So now he just needs ears. There's nothing else missing, is there other than ears? This is when I realised I forgot to make an important folding part. So the ones on the picture were actually great big floppy ears, you know, the ones that I put on the Facebook Live. So they were kind of, let me show you what size, kind of like giant sausages. Oh wait, this is a second folding. That were just pressed like this. Let me wait. I should have waited before rolling it out, but that's fine. About 10, about 10 grams. And they kind of went on the side like this. I could still stick them on, but obviously I've made holes in the top of his head. Should I do another one so you can see? And then I'm going to do some that stick up off the top of his head. Let's see if I get the same amount of weight. Oh, no, that's a lot more in that one. Um, and just so you can see the difference really between the two. But like I say, a sausage that's rolled out. And then it kind of goes. I haven't done this very neatly, this is just to kind of show you quickly. But obviously I put the holes in the top of the head, so I had designed him for him turning around for these big floppy ears. So he actually looks quite cute because he has the big floppy ears. Maybe I should change it to floppy ears. I'm going to show you the upwards ones and then we'll we'll decide. I'm going to put them to one side so I have the right weight. Okay, so if I'm doing upwards, upwards ones, ones that stick up, I wouldn't want them to have quite as much paste in because they'd be too heavy and they would just want to fall down. So can you see like on this one? They're much, much smaller. Um, again, I guess rabbits in real life, not that these look anything like real life rabbits, would be the same. Usually the ones with the ears that stick up have smaller ears and then the lop-eared ones have really big long ears. So I'm going to keep this. As long as it doesn't look like a teddy bear, because I've made them so small, then that's okay. So can you see, we're rolling kind of sausages, slightly thinner at one end than the other. Okay, I'm just going to press them down a little bit. I didn't weigh them, did I show weigh each one for you? About three and a bit. Three and a little bit. Oops. I'm going to press down into this, a bit like we did, you know, in the bow. Then now I can fold and then I'm going to put a little bit of water in the holes at the top of the head and I'm going to slot this into the hole. So that's the plan. I should maybe let them firm up a little bit first. If you've got five minutes to let them firm, then let them firm before you put them in. Can you see what's happening? I can stick the other one in because sometimes I can actually stick the ears together as well. So if I put a bit of water on the side of one, I can sometimes stick them up against each other to hold them upright a little bit more. Let's just turn around so you guys can see it a bit more. Can you see it like that? Okay, or sometimes they look quite nice with one flopped over like that. Both flopped over. This is where I play around so much with them. What do you, what's nice with the stood up ones or the big lock eared mosses? Oh, okay. So we ask the audience, okay, if you like, if you like lop eared, put a uh, thumbs up. If you prefer stuck up, you put a heart. And we'll see what the, uh, what most emojis we get and we can go with that. I'm going to start, I'm going to 
I'll give no, you all a minute. Wait, so I'll give you guys a minute because I think it takes a second or two to come through with that mix. That's a little heart there. I forgot which one to say with which. Oh, it's a real mix. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess you guys have seen how to I'm do getting this. Lots of, I'm getting lots of hearts now. I forgot which was which. Which one was hearts, which one was your thumbs up. I can't remember what I said. Did Richard say hearts with a lop eared? Oh no, I can't remember what I said. Um, These guys will tell you. Guys, did Richard say hearts with a lop eared? I think we've got more. Do you know what? I think we'll go with a. Uh... <laughs> oh no. Uh, we'll go with a lop eared. Sorry if you voted otherwise, we'll go with a lop eared. <laughs> Those of you that wanted me to finish already. <laughs> That's why we were all voting here, because we don't want it. You wanted me to get off so I could go have some breakfast. You have breakfast? Yeah, but I'm ready for my second lot of breakfast now. Okay, let's do lock it. Oh, look, you can see now that I've rolled them in balls that they are slightly different in size to each other. That one is that one. Pull these out. Now, the only thing is, obviously, it's got little holes on the top of the head, so... See if we can plug those back in a little bit so that we've got. Now you're gonna see I think I can't really smooth this out at the moment, so we'll see a little bit, but maybe I could put the ears so that they can kind of cover that. Or I could have put a bow on the top of the head actually that would cover these holes and then it could be a is it a jackalope? Where they've got antlers as well as ears, it could be a jackalope. Well, I don't know what they are. Well, it's not real life thing, obviously. A jackalope is like a half. I think it is a half. Rabbit and a half. Maybe I'm calling it the wrong thing. Does anybody know what a jackalope is? Well, maybe we'll ask you. Okay. So we've got our basic shapes. We're going to roll them out. Of course, you can put a pair of pink in the middle of these if you want. actually have some big oval cutters, I'm just not sure where I put them. And I didn't want to open another set, but I knew that I had a set somewhere. But you can get big oval cutters, and they probably they come in different sizes, so you would be able to put like the smaller one within the bigger one. A little bit larger. If I can. Some of these just ask if we could do small models of cupcakes like theirs. I'll show them you what i that's actually the rabbit that we've just made now. But can you see? It doesn't have eyes because it's so small. And everything everything is just made a little bit smaller. It does have holes for eyes. It doesn't have actual eyes. But if we changed the shape of the ear, so if we did a circle that squashed and put two semicircles and stuck them slightly further apart, that would look more like a bear. And obviously it just wants smaller feet here because the bears don't have back legs like that but yeah that would be really easy to change into a bear i think i've actually got a little bear cupcake topper on um, uh, youtube as well i think 
You probably have to watch the video back um, to see the, the different weights that I've put in this one. But do give it a try. And like I said, you can use different pastes. So remember, I used a mix of the Renshaw's chocolate and the Serotina modeling paste. But that's because I'm not so good with um, fondant and Tylos mixed together. This one's pretty big that I've done. Shipping worldwide yeah, still with done. the coronavirus. Um, deliveries to some areas are taking a little bit longer than normal, um, but at the moment, curries are still taking deliveries um, and picking them up. But yeah, it's just there is a little bit of a time delay in with people mm -hmm. receiving some orders, yeah, unfortunately. And um, but also, when you're abroad, it takes longer than a couple of days to arrive anyway, even without coronavirus. Um, so, just yeah, if you haven't received it and it's only been a few days. Bear in mind that it can take a couple of weeks anyway. Some yeah, some places can take up to a couple of weeks. So it's not usually within the UK. This is outside the UK. And then with the coronavirus, it can take take longer. Somebody asked what brand is the white pen. Oh, it's the fractal. In fact, I think Emily will stick a, a link on for you below so that you guys know all the... Uh, I do have different ones, but these, these ones are my <laughs> favourite ones that I use because they've got like a nice kind of... Not a brush, but more like a brush, so they don't kind of stick into my icing too much, these ones. Um, the white isn't quite as strong a colour as the other colours, um, but for me, I only use it for small things like the middle of eyes, so it works really well. 
look it up. Let me show you. you want... I think highlights as well. Yeah, sometimes add highlights with it and things. Um, yeah, I like that. Any other questions? We're going to try and do a Facebook Live every Tuesday. Tuesday and Thursday. Is it not just say that? At 10.30. At 10.30. AM, GMT. Yeah, so the plan is for the next few weeks, every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 10.30 AM, uh, that's English time, is that we'll do a Facebook Live. It won't be anything complicated. It'll just be something fairly simple, because even the simple stuff can take a little while, and I realise it's a bit boring for you guys to just watch me rambling for ages. Um, but also we wanted to do stuff that might be easy for you to do with the kids as well. I'm thinking maybe something biscuit related next week. Although I probably won't do baking online with you. I'll probably just be the decorating. Because Zoe doesn't bake. I baked cookies just the other night. You did bake cookies the other night, which I think you ate most of it. I ate them, yeah. <laughs> They weren't really ones for decorating though, they were like chocolate cookies just for eating. Um, but yeah, so I'll think of some other things. If there's anything you guys really want to see being done, uh, feel free to obviously comment and let me know what you fancy seeing. Um, but simple stuff. Alright, that's it. Thanks ever so much for watching guys. Stay safe.